this has been the year for the S&P 500 that people come, coming into it were not expecting much. But the market's like the Patriots, right? No one's expecting them to be awful, uh, although I might have... Maybe you know, not this good. But not this not good. Not 7-0. and Right? So looking forward uh, from an expectation standpoint is actually the momentum's behind the markets. Uh, and we actually think it can continue to move forward from here. And we're beginning to see the investor community and the trading community follow suit. How so? What are they doing? Well, what's interesting, of course, we know that it's been a lot of it's been the S&P 500, but more recently we've seen people actually move back into tech. Market leaders this year are an interesting mix. If I look at the sector perspective, it's utilities, real estate, and then tech. Right, so you get two very domestically oriented areas of the market: utilities and real estate, um, and those are historically defensive. And you continue to have tech. Look at Microsoft's earnings, um, mm -hmm. you know, most recently continuing to show growth of, growth of the cloud platform, and that's kind of got investors to kind of get their toes back into that area of the market. And, and so they're betting on big tech, they're betting on names like a Microsoft, and how are they doing that? Uh, are they buying one, are they buying levered ETFs? Are people taking bigger risks in the market, Dave? We're not actually seeing tons, uh, a significant amount of risk being taken outside of the ordinary with that particular area. So we have two uh, leverage ETFs, TechL and TechS, that allow investors to amplify their exposures to that particular area of the market. Um, but we're not seeing volumes in that area really pick up. We are beginning to see volumes in the semiconductor names pick up um, as investors look to take more concentrated bets in that space. But a lot of those names, you know, uh, it's been a mixed bag from some of the earnings coming out of, the, com coming out of that particular space with more uh, reporting to come. What are people getting out of? Well, we saw a significant amount of flows move into our leverage gold miner products. Uh, as we know, gold was really mm -hmm. thought of as a, def you know, a defensive play over the summer. Well, that's begun to kind of come off the table uh, as people have begun to begin to maybe dip their toes back more into risk-taking areas of the market on the equity side looking ahead. Mm -hmm. However, this earnings season, as you know, it's been okay, you know, as investors have, uh, as, excuse me, as companies have beat expectations, but they're not beating them as much as they have over the previous two or three years. So I think that's why we're not seeing kind of traders dive back in yeah. head first. Um, but they are not ignoring the fact that markets continue to power ahead. One thing we've talked about in this show a lot lately is liquidity volume overall for stocks has been down. Do we need to worry about underlying liquidity for ETFs, Dave? Well, we don't actually have to worry about underlying liquidity for ETFs, uh, especially in the stock market. ETFs actually, in my opinion, add liquidity to the market because now investors have the ability to not have to transact in the individual securities. We don't have to go out and trade all those particular securities when people are actually managing ETFs. You can actually have it, that additional so liquidity. So they just, they just, a lot of your products is mirror this. They don't need to buy and sell the actual shares. It's mirror the moves. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you only actually have to go buy and sell those individual securities when you have inflows or outflows. So in any given day, there's significant trading volume happening at the ETF level, but not at the individual security level. It's one of the real So it's benefits. happening on a separate level above the equity market. That may be one reason why equity volumes have not been good. Well, that, that, that is a good point. So we have seen, you know, in times of uncertainty, money moves into ETFs, money moves into futures and other kind of broad-based areas. They're not taking as much single stock risk. Now, people are, have a bit of concern about that, um, but I think it's more reflective, frankly, of the macroeconomic environment we've been in, where there's, mm -hmm. can, there's been a little bit more clarity on things like the trade war, some of the big picture issues, but it's not an all clear signal uh, by any means.